today we're starting a brand new series called Pray First. Everybody say Pray First. Pray first. Oh, y'all sound so good. You had your coffee. Come on. I love it. Uh, Pray First is our brand new series, and we're starting it today. And today I, I want to focus on this second word, first. I want to talk about first things first. Now, the next few weeks you'll hear uh, uh, about prayer, and you'll hear uh, us teach about prayer, but I want to talk about getting priorities uh, in line and priorities straight. You know, we're the second Sunday of the month and of the year, and so I, I just want to talk about how we can put our priorities in straight. And, you know, uh, you have values. Your values should match your priorities, Right? Your values should match your priorities. But have you ever, if you were all honest in this room, have there been times that there are things that are your values, but then you look at your priorities and they don't align? And it's like, oh, it's time to readjust. Like, I have been on my phone way too long. Or I've been spending too much time on things that I truly don't value. And I think how important it is for us to put first things first. In fact, when your life is out of whack, when things feel like th things are just off, usually it goes back down to priorities. Having the right priorities in our life. In Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, it says, The first four words of the Bible are, In the beginning, God. Y'all just say that. In the beginning, God. Right? That's how it should be. In the beginning of your relationship, God should be there. In the beginning of your day, God should be there. In the beginning of making a decision that's important for the rest of your life, God should be there. In the beginning of deciding what college to, to go to, God should be there. In, in the beginning of before you apply for that job, God should be involved in that. God doesn't just want to be a part of your life. God wants to be the center of our lives. Right? And so in the beginning, God. So we know him to be alpha and Oh, maybe y'all, y'all are, y'all, I mean, y'all Bible college first class students. Y'all are so alpha and omega. What? The beginning and the end. What is that saying? That's saying that, that he, 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 it starts with him, but it ends with him. That's good news for somebody because you could be worried about your future, but you need to know that he is in your future. He's in the end. This season, this too shall pass in your life. God's in the future. God wants to be in the beginning. And God wants to be in the beginning of your life. And he wants to be the priority of your life. And he wants to be the first of your life so that there can be a partnership. You and, you and I have a partnership with God. God doesn't just want to be your savior. He wants to be your partner. He wants to walk with you. You know, it talks about in the Bible, it talks about Enoch and how he walked with God. And then one day it says he was and was not. He went to heaven. He didn't even die. He just went straight to heaven. I just want that for you and I, that, that God would do such an amazing thing, that heaven start coming down on earth because we're walking with God, that he would bless our life, that he would equip us. Because I don't know about you, but I can't do this life and live in this world without God being the center of my life. I need him today more than I needed him yesterday. I need him tomorrow more than I needed him today. Why? Because my dependency is not on man. My dependency is not on my job. My dependency is not on others. My dependency is on him. The author and the finisher of my faith, God is who I'm trusting in, leaning into. And so I have to put him first in my life. And I love how our God is such a gentleman. He never forces himself on anyone. I, he never pushes himself on anyone. He's just waiting. A lot of times people say, I'm just waiting on God. I'm just waiting on God. Really, the reality is God is waiting on us. He's waiting on us to pursue him. He's waiting on us to make him first. He's, he's waiting on us to get in our Bible. He's waiting on us to seek him. He's waiting on, on us to worship. He's waiting on us to prayer. I, I remember there was a day, I remember I was in, in youth ministry, and I got to help me because I'm, I'm 15 years 15 years as a youth pastor, all right? But starting in youth ministry, I remember as a youth leader, I wasn't even a youth pastor at the time. And I remember I came into service and, and I was complaining. And I was being critical and I was pointing fingers and I was like, this wasn't good and this was bad. And, and, and I got checked by one of my leaders and just said, are you going to be a spectator and complain or are you going to be a participator and do something about it? 
I want to challenge you. There are challenges in your life right now, and God's looking for you to be a participator and, and being a partner with God and say, God, I need your wisdom. I need your strength. I need your favor. I need your help. I need your direction. I need you to guide me from where I am right now to where you've called me to be. God, I don't know what it looks like. I don't know how I'm going to get there, but God, I need you to be with me step by step till I get to where you've called me to be. And God, when I get to where I'm called to be, I don't want you to leave me. God, when I get the job, I'm not going to be like, okay, God, you're, you're good. You can stay right there. God, I need you to be right in that middle of that new season. I need you to be right in the middle of that new marriage. I need you to be right in the middle of that, of that challenge I'm in. But God, when I get through that storm, I still need you to be there. See, the disciples were so challenged, and they didn't realize that they had a partnership with God. You think about the disciples. They're in this boat, and there's a storm that comes, and they're freaking out, but Jesus is in the boat. They didn't realize that as long as they had Jesus in proximity, they can get to their destination. As long as they had Jesus in proximity, no weapon formed against them shall prosper. As long as they had Jesus on their side and they were close to him and they could hear him and they could wake him up, they could talk to him, they were in proximity of where Jesus was, that's all they needed. I don't need to arrive or get this or get that or be a part of that or have this or have that. I am just need to be next to to Jesus. Get, take everything, but give me Jesus. That's an old song like that, right? And so what is that saying is, is that mentality of God has to be first in my life. Because when God is first in my life, he'll bless the rest. Amen? Let's look real quickly in Genesis chapter 4, verse 2. Genesis chapter 4, verse 2 says, Now Abel kept flocks, and Cain worked the soil. And in the course of time, Cain brought some of the fruits of the soil as an offering to the Lord. But Abel brought the fat portions from some of the firstborn of his flock. The Lord looked over with favor on Abel and his offering. But on Cain and his offering, he did not look with favor. You know, when I read the scripture, I always kind of think about that I'm thankful that we don't bring animals as an offering today in 2024. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm glad because it would be kind of bloody. It would be kind of messy. But also, I, I don't know if I could do I don't know if I could be a part of that because I'm unqualified to mess with animals. Y'all, y'all got to understand something. I'm a city boy. I don't know nothing about animals. I, I just keep the animals away from me, and I keep myself away from the animals. You're, you're laughing at me, but I, for real, like, even if it's a dog, I'm like, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm suspect. I'm over there like, bruh, like, Keep your dog away from me. I, I, it's not sweet and cute for me, okay? And then, uh, I know there's some dog lovers in the, in the room. You know, I was thinking about when we talk about priorities, I was going to an event 6 o'clock in the morning, and I was outside. It was freezing cold. It was neg negative 5 degrees, and I'm getting in my car. I would started my car. I let it run for a while so that I could warm up. I get in the car, and I'm starting to drive, and I see this person out there, and they're walking their dog at 6 in the morning outside in the freezing negative degree weather priorities i was like yo they 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 got that that dog is making out making it out really well I, I think I think it's important for us, you know, when we look at the scripture in this context and we're looking at how they gave this offering and, and, and how Cain gave something half-hearted just a little bit and it was whatever, but Abel gave the first and the best. And when he gave God the first and the best, God gave his favor. He said favor came upon him. And I know sometimes some of us in the body of Christ, we could hear certain things that maybe people twist on favor and, and, and so I, I don't ever want it to anyone to, to get that inclination. But at the same standpoint, God does, we need God's favor in our life. We need God's hand upon our life. We need God's favor. And, and God's favor doesn't mean that you'll never have an obstacle or a challenge or be put in a situation. The Bible says that Joseph, that the Joseph had God's favor on his life, although he was still in the pit. Although he was still lied about, although he still was put in jail, but he had God's favor on his life. God's favor means that God is with, I look at thinking of that scripture of Luke ch chapter 2 verse 52. It says that Jesus had favor with God, therefore he had favor with man. I'm not trying to get favor with man, I just want to get favor with God because if I have favor with God, then I'll have favor with man. When I put God first and God's first in my life, I, and I, I put God first over my family, 
I have God's favor. Oh, well, this, so this, this can be a little bit of a struggle because it's like, wait a minute, I want to put my family first. No, 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 you put God first so he can bless your family. You put God first over your life so that he can bless your family and give you the wisdom, give you the supernatural wisdom, the supernatural favor, the strategy, the direction on how to lead your family, how to pray for your family, how to help your family. So when we, we align priorities and we say, God, you're number one, you're first, he does something supernatural and he blesses us and he equips us and he strengthens us and he gives us favor even in difficulty. You know, Pastor Doug always teaches us that, that uh, it, it rains on the righteous and the unrighteous. There's challenges. Challenges are going to come. The, the Bible says that uh, when the enemy comes in like a flood. It doesn't say if the enemy will come in like a flood. The devil's coming. He's coming to attack, and he's coming to attack us. He's not coming to attack people he already has. He's attacking people he doesn't have. He's trying to attack us. He's trying to get after us. He's trying. And so when he does attack us, it doesn't mean that we don't get under attack. It doesn't mean that we don't have challenges in our family. It doesn't mean that we don't have obstacles. It doesn't mean that we don't face difficulty. But when we have God's favor, we can get through the difficulty. We can get through the difficulty with grace. We can get through the difficulty with, with God's power and God's wisdom. And he hel helps us to keep our composure and how to respond. Why? Because we pray first. Because we put God first. I'm thinking about, I was studying this this week about Abraham Lincoln during the Civil War. And in the middle of the Civil War, he called the entire nation. This is in 1863. He called the entire nation uh, to a prayer and fasting, right? Prayer and fasting, the entire nation. Within a year and a half, the Civil War was over. After the Civil War was over, Russia decided to sell us Alaska for $7.2 million, which is two cents an acre. Come on, that's a good deal right there. I don't care if it's 1800s or not. That's a good deal. Then right after that, you know, after, after this happens, you know, God starting to bless. See, what happens is, is when he, he led the nation to prayer and fasting, the war stopped. Then favor came on them. Then in 1867, from that time that they got Alaska, for 27 years, the U.S. federal budget was in surplus. I don't think we've ever heard of that. I think America needs to go on another prayer and fast. The entire nation, no matter who the president is, right? Surplus. And yeah, that's incredible, right? What's the principle? The, see, when we look and read the word of God, we, and, and when we see different things, we, we should see, look for biblical principles. Biblical principle is this, is when we put God's first, when we put God first and we, and we give him our best, he blesses our life. He increases our life. He helps us. You know, another thing that happened in 1867 is Youngstown was chartered as, as a city. It started there. What I'm saying is, is prayer and fasting actually accelerates and does something supernatural because we're putting away and putting, putting things away that are not a top priority and putting God as the number one priority and saying, God, I'm not going to eat this. I'm not going to watch this. I'm not going to, I'm going to give this up so that I can have more in my life. Not so that I can lose weight. This ain't Weight Watchers. This ain't Jenny Craig. Come on, y'all. This is, this is, I'm going to have God do some. I might lose some weight because of what I'm, how, what I'm not eating. But I'm expecting to gain something spiritually. I'm expecting to hear God's voice clearer. I'm expecting to be in greater proximity to God and be closer to God. The closer I am to God, the greater I could hear his voice. Right? So I want to get closer to God. Everybody say closer. So when I put him first, I'm getting closer because I'm making him a priority and I'm gaining the favor of God upon my life. So number one, God must be first in our life. And if God's going to be first, if we're going to just be honest with ourselves, all of us in this room, including myself, is this going to cause discipline for God to be first? It's going to cause us to be disciplined. There's a scripture in the Bible that talks about this in Proverbs chapter 10, 17. It says the road to life the road to a life, God's life for our life, is a disciplined life. The road to a life that God has for our life is a disciplined life, right? So my disciplined life by putting God first and saying, God's, God's above all the other things. 
God's first in my life. I'm putting God first before I put my family first, before I put my finances first, before I put my cat or my dog, my hamster first, before I put TV first, before I put video, before I put anything social media, I, I put him first. Before I scroll, be, before I get out of my bed, he's first. So when we start to put him first and give God our best, then he's able to bless the rest in our life. He's able to bless our life. He's able to take us further than we could take ourselves. That's what we need. Now, sometimes, you know, uh, you know when I use the word prosper, I talked about this in the 9 o'clock service last week about the word prosper. The word prosper in the Hebrew means selach. And that word actually means that he'll take you further. So some people hear it, oh, you're a prosperity preacher. You're talking about prosper, brother. The prosper is all through the Bible. And what it mean, doesn't mean that a million-dollar check's coming to your home or that you're going to get this big lounge, this house, and million-dollar house, and you're going to have all these. It doesn't mean it. it. What it means, the word prosper means it'll take you further than you can take yourself. I want that for my life. Do you? I want him to take me further than I could take myself. I'm going to do my part, but when God does his part, I'm the natural, he's the super. Right? Supernatural, right? When I do my part, God's going to do his part. I have to put him first so I can get the blessing. I have to put him first in priority in my life so I can have the blessing of God upon my life. And see, I don't need man's blessing. I don't need man's increase. Because if man can give it to me, man can take it away from me. But if God gives it to me, the Bible says that the blessing of the Lord maketh rich and add no sorrow. That means when he blesses you, there is no sorrow in the end. Right? That means that when he, he blesses your life, and he's the one that brings the increase. He's the one that brings the promotion. I want God's promotion, not man's. Don't, don't you? Yeah? I want God's blessing on, on my life. I want, I want it for you as well. I want him to bless us and increase us. And that doesn't always mean financially, but it doesn't mean that it's not financially either. So we have to look at it from the lens of the word, not look at it through the lens of somebody else's opinion. We have to see what God's word says and that he wants to prosper us. And he did prosper Abel and blessed his offering. Why? Because he put, gave him the first and the best. But it also comes down to us being disciplined. C.S. Lewis, I love C.S. Lewis. He wrote this, and I love this. It says, no question God wants to, us to have his best for us. The question is, how painful will it be? Wow, because no pain. No pain? No pain? So it's going to cause us to be disciplined on what matters most. It's crazy how we could be disciplined for our body but not disciplined for the word of God. It's crazy how you could see an athlete be so disciplined to be so fit and in shape and do exactly but not disciplined uh, on, on morals and not disciplined on what they watch or what they listen to, not disciplined in their conversation. How important it is for us to be disciplined in the word of God, disciplined in our prayer life, disciplined to pursue him, disciplined to say, God, you're first before everybody else. You're first before anything else. God, I'm putting you first before I ever get on social media, before I ever sign in. There's a book called The Compound Effect. And this book is a secular book, but it says this. If you're willing to do the small things like they're big things, you'll hit a season to do big things like they're small things. If you're willing to do the small things like they're big things, you'll hit a season to do big things like they're small things. What is that saying? That's saying that you and I, when we start doing the little things, and just by when we wake up, good morning, Holy Spirit. Good morning, God. Good morning, Jesus. Work in my life today. God, whatever, wherever, whenever. God, I I'm available. And, you know, the greatest ability you could offer God is not your, it's not your talent, it's not your skill, it's not your treasure, it's your availability. And so your availability is the greatest ability you could offer God. So when you offer God the availability to say, I'm available, use me. I'm available, speak through me. I'm available, whatever you say goes. You don't want me to be date her? You don't want me to date him? Cool. You don't want me to watch this? Great. You want me to, you want me to cancel that subscription? Great. You don't want this allowed in my life? Great. Whatever you say, I'm going to follow. Because whatever you're saying is more important than what everybody else is saying. And when I start to listen, there's greater clarity. 
right? The more I listen to God, the greater clear, clear it comes. Because God don't change. He, God doesn't just give you a word and then change his mind and give you a different word. God will continue to say the same word over and over again till you obey it. Think about the children of Israel. He gave them one word and talked about the promised land. And they made excuses for 40 years and forfeited their future over excuses and complaining. So the reality for you and I is, is that when we put him first and make him best in our life, we trust him with every area of our life and we say, God, you're first and I want you to bless and I need your favor and I'm going to trust you with it. And, and if I trust you with it, I know that wherever I go, I'm following you and not my ways. It's not my ambition, but it's your plan, your purpose for my life. And as I'm pressing in and as I'm reading my Bible and as I'm going after you, I'm going to trust you with everything you have for my life. So God must be first. But then number two, we put God first by giving him the first of everything. Real quick, as, uh, as I'm going to close here and wrap this up in just a few moments. But Proverbs 3.9 says, honor God with everything you own. Give him the first and the best. My wife, Nikki, uh, she grew up in Youngstown area, grew up in Boardman. I met, I met Nikki uh, in, in Youngstown, traveling. And we were started dating, and I was living in Columbus at the time that we were dating. I was living in Columbus. She was living here. And if anyone knows me, you go into the office. I'm a huge Nets fan. Y'all pray for me. I feel your pain, Browns fans. I'm just, the, the struggle is real. Let's just leave it at that, all right? And uh, I told my, my wife before we were married, I said, hey, I, I got two, two agendas. This sounds so immature and superficial. I said, two things. One is I'm going to meet Jason Kidd who plays on the Nets, and I'm going to marry you. And my wife looked at me. <laughs> She's Italian and Greek, and she just looked at me, gave me a little bit of an attitude look, side eye, and said, well, it better not be in that order because I better be the priority. And I, in the words of the famous theologian Bruno Mars, I said, don't believe me, just watch. And uh, just at that, that moment, just, a, I mean, I said, I promise you, a few weeks later, God opened the door, I met Jason Kidd. And, then, uh, and I think I've got it somewhere. Do we have, I don't, we might have it. I don't know. We had, a, we had a picture of it somewhere. Ah, yes. He can't even look in the camera. I'm like, rah. Ray Allen trying to get up, two Hall of Famers right there, get in the midst of it. And so about six months later, you know, I had to be, I had to be a, you know, I had to let, build the anticipation. Because my wife's like, is this the day? Is this the day? He made Jesse kid. Is this the day? About six months later, I proposed and we got married. But I think about priorities of putting God first and the priorities of God has to be first in my life before everything else. If God's first in my life, everything else it will flow. God, God's not saying disregard your family. God's not saying, you know, sell all your house and you live in your car. And, and he's, not, he's not asking for you to, to, to destroy your life in the process of putting him first. But he is saying put him first so he can bless the rest of our life. Harvard did a study. In this study, that you know that one out of two marriages in America end up in divorce. Well, they did a study on, on a, a group of church members and thousands of church members. And in this study, they said that the church members that regularly attend, like y'all, that, that prayed and read their Bible, like y'all, they said that those people, the divorce rate decreased to one out of 1,246. Isn't that incredible? Well, yeah, the word works. When we apply the word, when we're doers of the word, it works and it does in our life. And as we're wrapping up, I just want to share this before I pray with you. I want to share this one thought about David. David, you, you, you know, in his, he's got so much story throughout, throughout the Bible that you, we could talk about a lot of things about David. David as a king, in, in 2 Samuel, just for reference, for 2 Samuel chapter 7, it talks about how David was in his beautiful, luxurious home. And one day he started thinking, you know what? Even though God's blessed me, he hasn't been first in my life. He realized that he had not put him first. He realized that the Ark of the, co the Covenant, the Ark of the Covenant was, was out 
outside in a tent somewhere, and he never built God's house. And so the prophet Nathan came to him, and they're having an exchange. God's speaking through the prophet Nathan, and he just says, God, I'm going to commit to build your house. And so then God said, you'll do that for me? God said, I did all these things for you, but I'm going to do more. See, there's more when we put God first. He said, I'm going to do more. I'm going to make your name great for generations and generations to come that your children's children's children will speak of your name, which we know that's the truth. And beyond that, not only with you building my house, I'm going to build your house. Oh, I thought about that for a second. I I, I don't want to build my house. I want God to build my family. I want God to build my life. I want his blessing. I want his favor. I want his strength. I need his wisdom. I need his power. I need his presence. I need his, I need what he can do in my life. If he builds my life, and I just want to say thank you, church family, because by by doing this heart for the house and say, hey, I'm going to build God's house, you know what you're doing? You're setting yourself up for him to build your house. You're saying, God, you're first. And God says, oh, okay, I'm first. Well, I have more for you. I have more of blessing. I have wisdom. I have strength. And I don't know what that is for you, but I do know that we serve a God of more that wants to take you further than you've ever been. Can we pray? Father, I thank you, God, for this amazing group today. God, those that are watching us online. And God, I just thank you, Lord, those here in the room. God, I thank you, God, that we're making you first. We're going to give you the first and the best, God, and trust you with the rest, God. God, we just invite you, Holy Spirit, speak to our hearts what to give up, what to do with what we have. And God, we'll give you our life and we'll give you the first, we'll give you the best, God, this year. God, your priority, number one. Before our family, before our finances, before our hobbies, before everything else, God, we put you first and know you'll bless the rest of our life. In Jesus' name, amen and amen and amen.